so i mean which design pattern you have worked on i mean any design pattern that you have uh, actually implemented for your use case i'm not uh, talking about the design pattern which you have just read or i mean uh, okay. so somewhere any design pattern which you have used like singleton i have used it for okay I, I only singleton yeah and actually i can singleton in fact okay uh, so can you uh, implement singleton uh, design pattern using inner classes I have not implemented so far, but can we implement? It? Okay, so how you implemented it? I have implemented like writing the singleton class, and like a class name of the class and defining private uh, private static variable, and uh, mm -hmm. defining the constructor as private, and uh, defining a public static method which will return the uh, instance of that uh, class itself, and uh, for uh, um, like uh, in case of multi-threading, so I have used synchronized block so that it will return only one object at a time, and I declared variable as volatile. So, so uh, one second. So you uh, in your class you said you created a single uh, static object, right? Yeah. And then right. you kept your constructor private, yeah. and you explain the public method, and which will return your instance, right? Yeah. So uh, I, why you have added synchronized here? Uh, why I have added synchronized? I have added synchronized block, not the synchronized at method level. Yeah, even why? if you added a synchronized block, why you added that? Because in multi-threading concept, uh, suppose two threads are uh, suppose uh, two threads are trying to invoke that method at the same time. Then. Mm -hmm. If I'm not using synchronized block, both will invoke that method at the same time. So there is a chance mm -hmm. that uh, suppose if I'm not using synchronized block, then I will check if h equal to or suppose instance equal to equal to null, then h equal to new uh, suppose singleton class object. So but but uh, hang on, so as you said that you you have created the instance already uh, using a static variable. In the, at the top of the class, right? No, 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 no. I have declared null. That is lazy loading. So where you are so creating your instance? Instance I am creating inside the method get singleton or get instance method. Okay, cool. Fine. So uh, what you are doing there? So here I am doing, I am checking if uh, that INS uh, equal to equal to null, then I am starting the braces, mm -hmm. then I am using synchronized block. In that I am passing the class level object, that is singleton dot class. Then again, I'm checking if h equal to equal to null, then creating the object and returning that. Okay, so uh, are you sure that by doing this, uh, you won't get, I mean, uh, every time there will be a single term, a single instance? And I have used volatile variable also. Variable I declared as volatile. Volatile for that. So uh, what volatile, uh, I mean, do here? Uh, what volatile will do? If you declare variable, if I'm if I'm not using volatile for variable, then what threads are doing? They are creating separate copy of that variable, and they are storing in the cache memory. Suppose we have multi-processor, two threads are there from two different processors, so they will create one copy of that variable in their cache memory. So this volatile ensures that always thread reads the uh, variable from the main memory, not from the cache memory. Means whatever last changes is there, that will be reflected to all the threads. Okay. Uh, so, uh, just think about a scenario. Uh, you are planning paper, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, just think about a scenario. Let's say uh, I have a class, mm -hmm. okay, test class, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a my third class. Mm -hmm. Class test we have. Okay. In, yeah, there are two classes. One is thread uh, test class, simple mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. Another is my thread class. Okay, we have separate. Class. Okay, in my thread, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. my thread class is implementing runnable. Mm -hmm. And uh, in test class, in the main method, what I'm doing, I have created three instances of test class. So, uh, my thread class, my thread one, my thread two, my thread three. Okay. Okay, okay. fine. You have now three instances of my thread class. Okay. After that, what I did, I created 
three threads, thread uh, T1, T2, T3. Mm-hmm. Uh, like thread T1 is equal to new thread, and I have passed uh, the instance my thread one. Mm-hmm. Then I created instance T2. Uh, I did like thread T2 is equal to new thread, and passed the instance as my thread two, and similarly mm-hmm. thread three. Okay, mm-hmm. and then I call T1 dot start, T2 dot start, T3 dot start. Okay, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Now uh, in my third class, I have a run method, mm-hmm. and from that run method, uh, I'm calling another private method A1. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Now in A1 method, I'm doing some uh, calculations, and I'm using uh, some class level variables, some method level variables, some static variables. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now what I want, I just want uh, only one thread to do that calculation in that particular method at one time. Either with one object or different object. So that's I have already told you that I created three objects, created three threads uh, by passing the instances. Mm-hmm. So one okay. thread I passed. Uh, so what is the my thread one, point? another to my thread two, then my thread three. At so what time, you will do to uh, ensure this? So now I have one question. Since what is our requirement? Mm-hmm. Whether you want to invoke this method only uh, means at a time only one thread should access this method either with w- one object or different object or uh, it can so, uh, access by multiple threads with different different objects two options are there yeah yeah so my as i have told you in my first step i have created three different threads with mm-hmm. and three different instances okay. i passed I different it. instances to all the threads yeah so i have to declare method as synchronous if I use synchronize, then Synchron. yeah. So at a time, uh, thread one will use my thread one to call the method. Thread two will use my thread two to call the method. Thread three will call my thread three to call this method. Okay. So by doing that, mm-hmm. uh, all the threads will enter into that method, which I don't want actually. So I can declare uh, two options are there. If you want only one thread should enter into this method, I can declare this method as a static. That is one option, static and synchronized. Mm-hmm. Or second option mm-hmm. is uh, I can use synchronized block and I can pass that class your name, uh, that class name dot class. Means I have to use class level lock. Okay, now uh, fine. Uh, let's say I did, uh, I've done this and it worked. Now, uh, mm-hmm. in my class, there is another method A2, mm-hmm. okay, which is also doing same kind of calculation, right? And it is invoked from uh, my run method itself. So, what my requirement is, like, mm-hmm. let's say uh, there are uh, multiple threads. So, what? Come, come, can you come yeah. So, uh, what I have done, I have created another method A2 in the same class, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. and uh, what my requirement is like. Uh, Let's say some thread is inside A1, mm-hmm. as we discussed in our last uh, question. Mm-hmm. So let's say if there is thread A1 inside uh, inside A1, then what I want to do, because as we already discussed that we uh, just want only one thread inside A1. Yep. So all other threads should wait there, right? Okay. Yeah, so now what I want, I don't want those threads to wait here. Mm-hmm. They uh, should uh, keep looking for, uh, I mean, another method or do some another calculation, let's say A2. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So I can keep some flag or something like that, or even so that uh, if it is acquired by some other thread, so it should go to it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now what I want, I have the same kind of calculation over there as well. So uh, I also want only one thread inside A2 as well at the same time. So what I'll do for that. Uh, now extra work functionality you have added. We have A2 method inside the same class. And mm-hmm. what I want, uh, what we want, uh, only one thread should access this A2 also. Yeah, yeah. But uh, if, but if, what is the condition if one thread is there in the A1, means other thread will go, it will wait. So what you want, they should not wait, they should go to the A2. Yeah, yeah, they should go to A2 because, um, uh, I mean, uh, if we go on, that's there is another method, uh, A3 or A4. So, uh, but I want, I want maximum parallelism, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, this is my requirement. So, if I am not defining A2 as synchronized, it will go automatically, right? 
Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, uh, it's up to you how you can ensure that. So Let's see how I did it into my thread. No, it is not like they did. Uh, like my thread one is using, sorry, thread one is using my thread one object to call the A one method. So it will mm-hmm. call and it will acquire the class level lock. At the same time, if thread two is trying to use my thread two to call this method because it will check for the class level lock, it is not available. So it will be it cannot call, but it can call a two method which is non synchronized at the same time. No, no. So that's what I'm saying because uh, then thread let's say thread D one is inside A one. Now thread G two and T three uh, they won't be able to go inside A one because it is already acquired by A one. Mm-hmm. Sorry, T one. Now what they will do? They will try to acquire the local A two. Mm-hmm. But as if you are not using synchronize over there, so both thread can enter inside that. But I don't want that. I want also want only one thread to be inside. So that. we can use synchronize keyword here. We can use object level lock, not the class level lock. Synchronize but again, okay, now let's say you have you have used synchronize uh, normally, and you take the object level lock, then both the threads will come at the same time, and they can enter because they have different object associated with them. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. 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 Yeah. Okay. One second. Let me think. I have not used, but can we use lock object for this? Lock API is one option, but uh, let's say as of now we are just talking about synchronization and all this. Okay. Can we use wait notify in some way? So what is that way? Wait and notify object. Wait and notify. I mean, how you will do that? Then? Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, I think with synchronize uh, only synchronize it will not work. If I'm using a static means it will do that lock. Uh, Entire class lock and no threads will be allowed to use that method. We can define some flag on top of the class. And, mm-hmm. uh, so can't you define? I mean, uh, as we told earlier, can't you define two? Uh, I mean, two class level lock at the top of your class. Simply, sorry, come on. Can't you create and take the object on uh, take the lock on those objects? Yeah, yeah, by using wait method, we can do that. No, no, I'm not saying wait method. I'm saying just let's say you create two static objects of your class, mm-hmm. object one, object two, mm-hmm. at the top of your class, and take the lock. Uh, let's say in A one method, take a lock on uh, object O one by using uh, adding a synchronized lock, and take a lock on object O two in A two method, synchronized O two. Then don't you think it will work? Mostly, I have passed dot class token only. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying. I mean, that's uh, that that will limit you to. I mean, uh, just use one class level object, right? Mm-hmm. So that. I mean, can't you do that? Okay. okay. So uh, let's move on. Class level variable. With a static, and that we can pass in synchronized block. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, I know.